it's a great opportunity for, for us to kind of get to hear from each other. And we'll get into breakout groups and, and get to talk to each other as well too a little bit more. But I thought I'd start just by introducing um, kind of the members of the Aintis team that are here before. So you probably know everyone if you've been attending webinar, um, webinars before, but just to go around and do a little um, group of introductions. So I'm Leah Dowdell, the head of research at Aintis. Um, and then we have Barry here today. Barry Dillon. Hi all. <laughs> It's our communications and membership officer. We have Emma O'Kane, who's our social media officer. We have Kelly Ann Farron today, who's our project officer, who is looking at uh, kind of the National Further Education Training Learner Forum and Learner Voice. And I think we have another colleague, two colleagues that might be joining us, although I don't see them here today, but that will be Sam O'Brien um, Ollinger, who's our um, uh, policy officer, who might be stepping in today, and our office manager, John Ryan. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see them in the next few moments. Um, so yeah, just to kind of give everyone a couple of updates on some Aintis activities that are kind of going on um, as well. So I guess we're in a we're we're in the lead up to a really big week uh, event, which is the Adult Learners Festival. Um, so we have that's going to be taking place in the first week in March. So you've probably seen a lot of updates coming through the member the member newsletter and information that's coming out from from our comms team in relation to the activities going on. So we're in the process of uh, kind of going through the judging process for the Star Awards and we're really excited for that. Um, but we're gonna have a series of events and activities across the week as well. I'm gonna encourage all of you as well too, if you do have events that you'll be hosting, um, they can be meetups for, for learners or just kind of something to promote the activities of the center, please do get in touch and let us know because um, we'll share that as part of a, the campaign's promotion and we can kind of offer some support and stuff as well too in how to, to promote those events as well. So definitely do keep in touch with us and let us know. Um, we're also going to be having a policy day at the end of the Adult Learners Festival that looks to be uh, incredibly interesting. So we're doing the um, event with our NALAB network, our um, network of um, agencies across borders that'll be coming together to talk about activities that are going on in the UK, um, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Um, so we hope you can all join us for that event as well. And then just to let you know as well, um, we, in the recent newsletter that went out, there is a call for the Mitigating Against Educational Disadvantage Fund. Some of you may have seen this and um, we have a survey that's kind of gone out. It's just a quick short survey, about eight questions that asks about your experience um, with the fund. So we're hoping that we can advocate for future funding, but also to make sure um, that we kind of, you know, feedback important information to improve those processes um, as well. And Salas is looking to promote some of the activities as well too that have taken place as a result of the fund. So um, there's a little comms piece that's included in that as well and if you have any questions on that please feel free to reach out to any um, member of the team and last thing to kind of flag for for events going on the forum is really heavily underway so Kellyanne is here if you can ask her for <laughs> uh, advice or any information on that but we do have about five events coming up between uh, February and March so lots of different ways to get involved if you have learners that um, are interested in participating in the forum please let us know but with that said, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to hand over to our um, guest speaker today. So we're very lucky to have Shane Dumphy with us here today from AMPM Safety and um, Environmental Limited. So Shane actually has, um, he has an HDIP in Safety and Health and Welfare at work, and he's going to actually talk to us about some uh, health and safety regulations in the workplace today. And he's joining us again, we should mention for a second time. So we really appreciate Shane's uh, 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 effort in coming to, to share his knowledge with us and looking forward to hearing what he has to say. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Barry, I can share the, share the screen, can't I? Uh, should be, yeah. Should, should be able to see in, yeah. Yeah, no, it's working. I, you, know, you think at this stage we'll be used to Zoom. <laughs> We're just peddling here and peddling to keep it going. <laughs> All right, go back. All right, welcome, everyone. It's, it's nice to see so, a few faces I actually remember from the last day. So, uh, we're pro. What was it? I don't know, it's nearly a year now, Barwin. So we were in back on, on the call. So um, I, I didn't think we'd be coming back to have a, a further conversation about different things about life with COVID. Um, so look, just very quickly, um, I'm just going to give a quick, like the last time um, I was here, I didn't get much of a chance to introduce myself. It was very much, uh, we we're in the midst of trying to solve, uh, you know, a very difficult thing for all of us when we we're teaching from and, and working from 
uh, you know, through COVID. So look, my background is a, as as they said, is I have a di- diploma in health and safety. I have, I have a diploma from England. I've also a diploma in in um, here in Ireland through UCD. Um, and a certain UCD, I've done a little bit of uh, HR with in in WIT as well. And then um, I started off my career as a as a fitness trainer in doing Bachelor of Arts. So this will be my area of expertise or my passion. Really, it would be you know uh, ergonomics, uh, biomechanics, and all the different things around trying to make sure people don't get injured and sore and stiff around necks and shoulders, which we probably all are at the moment from working at the moment um, around uh, kitchen tables, I think, and islands and stuff like that and homeschooling. Um, I have a you know, certificate from an adult education. Um, I do a lot of work with some of your members, um, you know, so uh, which I enjoy a lot. On the other side of things, my background is uh, outside of all the stuff I do in, in work um, uh, is that I'm a unfortunately a coach so um i work with elite athletes um so i'm one of the very very lucky ones we're considered to be professional at the moment so we're still training so um we're looking we're out and about um and we're in our little bubbles and doing all that kind of stuff so it's 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 nice to have the monotony to break up the monotony in the even times to do that so that's fantastic so um me, me as an instructor um so i'm like every probably all you in the room we're looking at different things and training to I do a lot of training, so um, I think every single one of us are kind of a little bit fed up with Zoom at the moment and trying to come up with different ways of doing things. So, yeah, so I'm a safe pass shooter, manual handling, patient handling, first aid, um, brace of wheels, worker heights, and I have a whole other ones that, uh, you know, that was, I didn't really want to be putting up, but they're the main ones we work at. So what we're going to do, like what we do is in what we, like um, again, is we help everyone with this. So um, just the background on AMPM and what we do, uh, it's a family-based company with myself, my wife, my dad, uh, my sister, um, and then we have another uh, another office admin and, uh, as well and a manual handling instructor. So like some of like a lot of members, we do uh, training. We're QQI providers. We're in the midst of uh, uh, getting our application from IOSH um, sorted and over the line. So we'll be doing IOS training courses as well. Um, and I, I have just in the midst of all this, uh, on top of having the, of us having a third child, um, we decided to set up a, a second company. So we do first aid supplies now as well since since we talked to you last time. So um, just a little bit late on the PPE. We, <laughs> we, we had to have it set up before for last February. We probably would have been a lot, a lot happier, um, but it didn't work out that way. So look, that's what we're at at the moment. In relation to today, so what we're going to do is after this, uh, we're going to break into rooms and stuff. But like what we're looking at is... Um, Real quickly in your rooms, I'm looking for you to have a chat to share your experiences um, in relation to working from home, maybe teaching from home if that's happening, or you know, you're helping other lecturers or teachers in relation to that, how they're struggling. You know, we've 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 all seen the the the, the bad things that go on and happen and mistakes people make with Zoom and all these different things. So you know, just in, in the positives, what we're doing to try and help things uh, and make it easier for the learners as well. And then managing home life, um, my my like I'm, our home life, more, you know, is very very difficult. We have a five year old, I have an eight year old who has a a learning difficulty, and I can't wait for the the special sections of the school to open up that will make things a little bit easier at home. And I have a seven seven month old who's uh, been diagnosed with Down syndrome. Um, so look, managing all that type of stuff, um, it's stuff that we all forget to talk about. And as employers, you know, happy employees means productive employees so yeah just maybe have a chat about these 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 things come up with what you're doing how you're handling these and if you want to share any experiences because the powerpoint then i'll i'll uh, move it towards uh, the questions we get in from the breakout rooms so bar i'll bring it over to you to if you want to put people in the breakout rooms and do all that type of stuff Okay, right, got right, Grant, walk away. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, what kind of do you want to pop? Actually, do you want to pop a few? Any questions came in, Barry? To you? Yeah. No. If 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 people would just like to pop up any questions or any points uh, or any concerns that they have regarding health and safety, either working from home or basically returning back into the classroom or into the office, if they'd like to pop them up in the chat, uh, Shane will do his best to make sure he covers them then. Yeah. Uh, between now and the end of the presentation. Yeah, it's about 15 minutes for about presentation, and then I think about 10 or 15 minutes left for Q&A for everyone. So, yeah, definitely. All right. Cool. I'll pop in here real quick. Right. Uh, current slide. All right. So, look, um, you know, to pop it the griddle group we had, we were talking about, you know, there was 
a lot of the negatives were talked about in relation to working from home. So look, there is benefits uh, in doing what we're doing, um, you know. But this 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 doesn't seem to be one that I, I'm hearing from colleagues, from friends, people doing like the better work life balance. That comes with we have to discipline ourselves and change what we're doing a little bit. Obviously, the good thing is we've reduced the, the daily commute. So uh, the flex. From work, I, I was in. I was doing. Uh, I was in doing some work for a couple of the hospitals in Dublin yesterday, and I was. Fantastic. An hour and a half to Dublin, no traffic, <laughs> no queuing for an hour uh, in Bray. So it was great. Uh, flexible working hours. Yeah, look, that's a huge thing. Um, <coughs> my daily hours. And uh, we got to, that's got to be discussed amongst less impact in the environment, to be honest, which is great. Um, you know, recruitment um, doesn't need, we don't need to be around the areas um, where we're in. So, that, you know, so that's the benefit. Sometimes it, it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Saving on office spaces for your employers and all that type of stuff will happen. Um, so difficulties, right? So it is difficult, and this was a big thing that came across in the in the break. And what we what I was in was adjusting to the to you know the the differences of what we're doing and the and the and how we are working. Staying focused, huge thing with you know working at the kitchen table, people going by, other people in the house doing different things. Uh, difficulty monitoring performance and motivating employees. Look, I, that's that, that that has become a huge thing. But like that, we will talk about how we deal with that and how how. Um, how we keep in contact um, with those. Uh, the difficulty building, you know, effective teams and feeling like we're part of a team. Uh, let's uh, go forward there. Um, and then this was a huge one that came up in our group, you know, overworking, you know, you know so, um, and look, with with phones and then having the laptop and in your house and or your computer, you, you feel like it's there the whole time. So just that, that, that there's no distinct, uh, time difference or um room or area for yourself you know we can feel like and then also we can do a hell of a lot more um and a lot longer hours if we're there stress um isolation huge part um you know that we're, we're not even though we're in conversation here it's not the same you're not talking to someone face to face you don't have the same reactions um as as you would um you know maintaining equipment huge huge thing i, I don't think anyone who was talking in the group and even before or even in that breakout group we had everything we need to and we'll throw that up um so carrying out risk assessments you know it's a difficulty right so if you are supervising you are managing it is your responsibility, uh, and it's a huge part uh, of it. And I think it's probably the one that has we've fallen down. We've done all the COVID stuff, uh, but we, you know, we're not doing that um, risk assessments for home. And we have a couple of tools, a couple of free ones um, for you uh, to do or that you can use. And I've given you the, the kind of solutions to the problems then as well too. And then training then and trying to do um, as well too is a little bit difficult. Right. And then caring for you know different groups or. Um, of, of learners, students, uh, workers, all those different parts. So just real quick, how this is supposed to work. So the HSA have developed a, uh, a document and this is part of it. Um, we're obviously going to be moving, you know, they're, they're working very, very, you know, it's been a very quick thing for them to do. So the first thing you got to have is a, a policy for working at home. What's the hours? What are we going to be allowed to do? When are we... Um, What's, what's the email policies, all these different things. Identify then, consult with employees, have the conversation, have they got workspaces, have they an area, a, a box room. You know what I mean? I, we've seen the pictures of any following to, to the FM, Maria Rowan doing her program from her, uh, what was it, her, her, some storage room or something, the attic or whatever, I can't remember. Or, you know, so there's a whole lot of towels around. Her, you know, so um, identify what equipment you need. Just look, I, I'm going to give you a few hints and, and pass you it's up to you then you can get them from your own suppliers and all that kind of stuff on that and then do your risk assessments we have that here and then we got to keep constantly monitoring and chatting to employees um on the different things um so um this is what the employer has to do so this is taken from the hsa guidance and it's really really straightforward anyone who works from home anyone who works on a computer consistently we've got to have a risk assessment of it and once there's a change in practice or a change in work location that risk assessment has to be updated so that's there and um, there's always department there the, the we're in title die tests um if we do work on computers so that's there um and the employer has to help you help out with that and then we got like training on the use of the keyboards the mouses light you know up and down um you know so someone says to me already my chair goes up and down but there's a little bit more to it than that <laughs> your body and your 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 butt and your hamstrings and your quads and your um and your back are a little bit more complex than just uh bringing yourself up and down and moving around so it's it's a uh, something new and we tend to be sitting a lot longer now because we're sitting at the desk and we're going to we're going to all go make a cup of tea so we'll watch 
you know, Jerry Springer or whatever the hell's on at that time of the day, um, and take a half an hour and we're still sitting, you know. So they're their little issues. That's the link. So uh Barry, you, you can send it out with and with with that uh, after on. It's there, it's on the HSA website. So the bits that I'll be going through are, are gonna be here from that. It's really helpful, really simple, really straightforward. They've done a really good job on, on, on it. Um, for the employees, for us, right, so a couple of things. This was a huge part of it. We have to find a suitable space. So I'm in the house here at home. Like We're lucky enough, both of us are self-employed, so we've created, we've changed one of the bedrooms downstairs into the into, into an office. Um, and it's a, it's it's ours. It's a space for the office. So doors locked, kids not allowed in, um, and that's the way it works. Okay, so we have to find some suitable space. That's a challenge. Um, the... Lighting, huge issue, right? So over my head, I, you know, you'd see an office shine off my lovely bald head, uh, you know, if, if I had the lights on um, here and beside windows, things like that, you need to, you know, we need to pick those different things. It has to be comfortable um, temperature wise. Um, the workspace, you know, uh, tidy. Don't forget your backgrounds, right? We're all on Zoom, right? Behind us. Um, I don't know if you've seen the horror stories um, from the college students and everything else going on and the pictures in the background and you know all these different things um so you got to be got we we are working so it's got to be some way of professional and um, so make sure that we're concerned i'm sure we've seen the student um uh, the american young lad uh, with the mammy walking by getting dressed um all these different things that happen um so uh, be really really careful and, and be 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 aware of what's in the background so right? okay um and also for yourself like so i'm i'm looking enough i'm standing up um, here I have a, I have a, a desk, you see, I'll show you it in a minute, that goes up and down. Um, but um, how many of us are in a, a pair of shorts or jocks or, uh, um, or, you know, so do remember you might stand up, right? So don't forget about putting clothes on. Um, these things, all these different things that happen, right? Um, so um, it breaks up the monotony, I suppose. It's funny, but um, it, for the person themselves, it's probably not great for their mental health for that type of stuff to happen. Um, loud noises, interruptions, distractions you need to look at. Floor, obviously, you're going to have travel cables, all that kind of stuff, slip trips and falls, biggest hazards in every work location. And simple things, sockets and trailing cables. Right? So there's so so many little things that you can get to, to help and cover them over if that's, that's needed. Right? Um, adequate broadband. No, I think you know. So it's it's a challenge. Right? You know, what I mean, I'm out in the sticks here in Wexford. Um, it's a real, real big challenge. Like so, once I'm doing Zoom at night and Netflix is on and the, the two tellies are on, it it becomes a real big problem. So it, it is something we need to have the conversation about. So this is the this is the risk assessment form, All right? So anyone who's employing anyone or you're supervising anyone, this is what you've got to fill in. Um, you go through everything, and we go through. Uh, chairs, laptops, desktops, what we've got to do because, you know, we'd pr we're probably not all working from a, um, a, a station, we'll say. We'll probably have more laptops than anything else um, at home. You know, footrests, heights of things, mobile phones, but little things like uh, what I have in me, you know, the headset, you know what I mean? So um, I've even, cause, because I'm using Zoom at the moment, I'm waiting for it to come in. It's, it's, I've ordered about two months ago. It's, it's the wireless without, without this wire here so that you can walk around. If you're on your mobile, um, have you got your little, so there your little, I do, where's the camera? There's my pods from a ear, or do you have your strings for your ears? So you're not bending over, holding your head. Little, small, tiny things like that uh, make a huge difference, you know, as well too. Uh, printer, please don't put your printer on the desk beside you, right? It's the simplest thing in the world to have it 10 yards, 15 yards, even if you can, in a different room if it's wireless. So it makes you get up off your butt and walk. Right? Okay. So, um, and even files and things like that, don't have them, only have what you're working on there beside you and, you know, put other things away from you. So it's a, little, a tiny little thing that'll break it up for you and uh, makes a huge difference. Um, so, some, some things we should look like. How many of us have a house like that? <laughs> You know, we don't probably have, we're not lucky enough to have that space. You know what I mean? We're not lucky enough to have the area. So different things like where we, you know, we have. So what we're all probably more familiar with is that, that, eating your dinner there. Um, you know, so we'll talk about the different heights and different things that need to happen. Your posture, right? So there's no, look, look there isn't, you talk to any physio, any car, but there isn't anything bad in relation to posture it's when we hold ourselves in one position for too long or do something for too long so there's no such thing as bad posture it's prolonged posture is the issue okay so staying so if i stood where i'm standing here for for eight hours a day 
it's a disaster for me. Right? Okay. So it's the same if you sit where you are for this length of time. Human beings are designed to twist, they're designed to turn, or, or you know, but we're not designed to do things repetitively and for long periods. You know, that's the, the issue. So um how many of you look like that at the desk? Right. Um I actually see that's that that's a, not a real picture I taken, but I that's probably the most common one. Right. So the height of the computer is too low. Um, his table, his chair is too far away. Um, you know, is there could be light squinting? You know, there's lots of different things on that. You know, so um, we'll talk through. So the laptop, right? So the elbow is too low. The chair is too low. Leaning forward, no back support. Um, so we'll give you a little solution to that in a second um, as well. And then the mobile phone and the cross legs. So you confuse your body when you can cross your legs when you're sitting down. It's bad enough that you sit down. You know, do you want to call? Um, sorry, just a question. You were saying yeah. there about holding the same posture for too long. Yeah. How how long is too long? Oh God, right. Um, it depends on look it, it, human. So I'll just use me as an example, right? If if I have I have a I have a really bad knee, so if I sit for a half an hour, it'll swell, right? Or if you're fit and healthy, Stephen, like, and you're running and you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, not, get, you're not getting old and crinkly like me, um, and too many sports injuries, you might, you might last an hour and a half. You know what I mean? So it, it, oh, yeah. this, this is a challenge with what we're talking about today. It's so individualized to you. So like, you could have a car crash or something like that, um, and you know, ten years ago, and or a bike, you could have fallen off a bike or a horse, and it could cause you a problem. So it is really, 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 really into you, but. Like the, the, the rule of thumb is we shouldn't be sitting, we shouldn't be doing anything more than for 50, 45, 50 minutes. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the ideal. We should be getting up every 45, 50 minutes and moving about. You know what I mean? So um, that's the, what we're looking at. I do see there's loads of questions coming in and things, comments coming in onto the, the chat. So we'll, I'll pop it, I'll, I'll go through all them at the, the very end, guys. Right? Okay. So, right. How do we set up our desk? Right. So um, I'm going to come off to share to share this. Right. So, um, you know, you can see me at the camera here at the moment, right? So I'm standing up, right? So you can see by the height. Right? So I'm looking straight ahead. There's no dip in my chin. There's no movement up. I'm not hunched over. So I have the computer at the height. So my arms are at basically 90 degrees or sorry, a little higher than the table, a little higher than the table. So my hands are falling flat on the, on the computer, but I'm looking straight ahead. So the height, of the, the height of the computer is at my height, right? So why do it? And it's a challenge for me, right? I'm six foot six. Okay. So um, the, the table technically doesn't go high enough none of the tables actually go high enough for me right but what i do then is i like everyone you put it you put a you put the tower underneath it you put the um, you, you get monitor risers you, and you or even just a simple thing uh paper reams right you know, you know that's what we all do so that's the ideal right so sitting down what do we do right so sitting down our knees should be about, our, our hips should be at 110 degrees, right? So they should be slightly higher than your knees, okay? Your feet should be flat on the ground. Your your backside should be hitting the back of the seat, okay? Um, and I'll just bring in my chair, one sec. Right, and I'll, I'll, bring the, I'll bring the screen down so you can see. So my chair, right, so it has, it's up to, it's up to, it has, it brings it up to chest height, right, so it goes all the way down, so rather than having a chair that's um, just coming up to the middle of your lumbar spine, you know, have a chair that supports your back and your neck and your head, you know what I mean, so um, now that's not, right, that's not an absolute legal requirement, that's a personal choice for me, um, that one, so, but like that's, the, there's not really much difference in the chairs, and I'll show you examples of different things um, with that, but the chair has to be able to come up and down, it has to be able to tilt the back. There has to be a lumbar support in it. Um, you know, so you know, they're not expensive. Like 150, 60 euro um, of a chair. You know, so it definitely doesn't. It can't be your your uh, kitchen table and your and your and your. That's that's not adjustable. <laughs> it's not going to work for you. That's the easy way. Simple. Another simple solution. Bluetooth. Everything. Right. Okay. So you have your wireless keyboard your wireless mouse so that no matter what it is you can move around and whatever files you have because we're let's be honest with it none of us have space enough in the house for this right okay um so we had those different things will help usually um to do that so you can bring them anywhere um you should you sh for your for your laptops you should have a separate keypad and you should have a separate mouse because your laptop is about you know an inch and a half uh um above the above the 
the line or above the the table. So you're going to have your your wrist a little bit higher than it should be. So they need to be flat. Okay, so that's why the keyboards and, and stuff like that will help. You can get all types of fancy ones as well if you have wrist problems or all that kind of stuff. So it the equipment is the equipment is there, right? Um, has anyone any question on that works on on the setting up the workstation before I go a little bit further? Is there any kind of, are we all right in the? Uh, I was looking at the slides now. There's no. Uh, go, go on. Uh, get there. Uh, next one. Yes, there. Yeah. Right. So I'm just looking at a couple of questions there. Cool. Right. Um, the and this is where we're right. This is a, a solution for your laptop. Right, okay. So this is a. I have a, st I have a stand. I have a desk that goes up and down here at the moment. That's I'm standing at. Uh, but this is now a solution that you you can have. They were huge in America for the last couple of years. So basically, that expand that, that expands up, expands down. So you can put that at your kitchen table. You can put it at your island. Um, you can put a small, you know, so you have your workstation for that. So different heights. Um, and then if you're tall like me, you can get you can get different things that will extend the height of the, the laptops that will attach to that as well. Um, I I just literally I just typed that into to Google last night or Monday when I was just getting everything ready for Barry here, and I think that came up on Go Stand. I think it was 180 quid plus fat, right? Um, but go to your own suppliers, go to your local, keep it local, right? We're all. We're all struggling in the localities or business, so keep it within your areas where you are. Um, that that's a that's a simple solution. So you can fit you so you can fit your laptop, your mouse, and all that kind of stuff. And the great thing about that, you can tidy it all up away. So if you are working at your kitchen table, that you can just put it away in, in somewhere that night. Then um, that's the standing table. That's what I have in front of me. So that you can see on the controls that goes up and down. Um, as I was saying to the guys beforehand here, like we're all struggling as businesses. Um, so your employer has a does have a duty of care to you, um, but I can't see an employer spending. You know, every employer being able to, to at the moment being able to look at five and six hundred euro per person to put a desk in, in your house and in your office. <laughs> You know I mean, so um, we've got there's the legislation and then there's the real world. So we we we've got to is this going to be permanent? We don't know, but like you know, we need to have conversations about these things. But that's that's what we should all be buying, um, because human beings are not designed to sit down, right? So we're designed to to be on the move. So um, and it's 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 important that we can change stances and change postures, um, in between different things. You know, so there's an example Shane, of Shane. If yeah. I could just I just come in there for a wee second, um, okay. if, if it's all right. I think that the main thing is here, because I see there was a question there, what uh, happens uh, from Breed, sorry, what happens in the situation where an employer, or sorry, employee does not have suitable remote work and setup? I think, and we said this before, actually, the last time, it's really about having that conversation. It's, yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, it's about having the conversation. It's, you know, some things are possible and some things just aren't. But, uh, you know, if you don't ask and if you don't actually bring this up, well, then what happens is after a few months, you're going to be in, you could be in a lot of pain or it could be a lot of sort of going, well, this didn't happen for me. So it is really about having that conversation. And I think the other thing as well that Shane has mentioned is, and I think it's really important, but I'll say it again for that very reason, is try as much as possible to keep things local. If, if you can try and keep things, yeah, we can probably buy everything on Amazon and all the rest of it. But as, as Shane was sort of mentioning uh, during the week to myself, it really is important. He's going to give you his ideas, but it's important that if you can try and keep it local as much as possible. Yeah, no, definitely. Look, it is, that's a huge, like it is a huge problem. But look, the regulations is if we can work, sorry, the guidance, not regulations, yet, the guidance is that we we are to work from home where possible. So if the employee, if, if, if it's not possible for you, so it came up in our breakout room that, in relation to we, you know, people were struggling with internet or you know, you know, being able to have a space that was capable of having a meeting in. Like if that's not possible at your house, your the, the the guidance is you're to work from your from the office then. You know what I mean? So it's where possible. Now on the other side of things, there's there's a hell of a lot of employers making you know saying that they're making up things and making people go to work. So it's it is about having the, it's about having an open dialogue as well with, with your with your employer. And look, yeah, definitely. Um, it's a huge that that that's going to be a huge. It's going to be a problem all the time. Um, about space at home in different areas. In relation to that chair, that's probably one of the high end model chairs, right? So, um, the only thing with the armrests we see here that we is there is a problem with the armrests is that the armrests may not fit underneath the table depending on your height. So sometimes we take off the armrests. So armrests are not there for you to type 
with your elbows on the armrests, right? The armrests, or this is when Barry, I met Barry and Gore, he used to love lying back on the, on the armrests in Gore Ute needs, right? Um, I so. wasn't lying back, Shane, sorry, I don't need to clear this up, I wasn't lying back, I was contemplating my next move. <laughs> so they, they, the armrests are there for breaks, that's what they're there for, to give your body a break. Um, so when you're typing, your elbow should be just, just your elbow is slightly higher than, than the table, um, it shouldn't be downwards on, on putting pressure, because when you put your elbow down, it's bringing your shoulder down, which most of us get the pain when we're doing, is up along here and up into our neck. That's the one that causes the problems. And a lot of that is down to sitting, right? And and typing posture, uh, more than anything. Uh, the type, sorry, the typing posture more than the sitting. So as we said, wireless everything. That's the real. I put up. I put up the real fancy keyboard for you, right? Okay. That's. Uh, I was doing it last night. I think it, looking up in a couple of places. The average from 150. Sorry, 120 to 150 uh, plus fat. For, that's an ergonomic risk assessment with a, with a with a with a bend in the middle. So it's 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 quite a funky uh, wireless keyboard and wireless mouse. The wireless headset that you see there for when we're all doing Zoom and all that kind of stuff, um, you cannot get them at the moment. They're absolutely they're sold out. So as I said, I'm waiting for mine for a couple of months now, and um, they're 180 plus fat, right? Okay, but again. Do your shopping around, uh, and uh, like you know, I look, I'm I'm in Wexford and um, Jones's or John Business Systems are my are my guys, and like you'll all have your own guys, um, um, for so stick with them. They'll all have these. There's there there isn't a problem there. They're well there, all right? So dealing with a few things from home, so uh, <laughs> the expenses, the employers, it surely is. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, I'll come I'll come back to a couple of them now in a sec. All right, so. I don't know. I don't know. However, else I'm, as I said, I'm lucky in relation to like in the evening time. I'm the I, what I do is uh, as a hobby. Well, I do get paid a little bit sometimes for us as well too. Like I, I'm coaching, so um, we we're deemed professional at the moment. So we're we're lucky enough to be back training this week. So that that breaks up the isolation for me. That's my part. So, but like I'm sure everyone else is. It's you know you get fed up with talking about uh I have an eight year old who 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 doesn't talk about anything else but dinosaurs. So um I'm sure we're all going through different things like that with, with people in the house. Um feeling trapped, overwhelmed. All right. So these are things lifestyle, diet, exercise, uh stress management, huge one. Huge one. We need a mental health that comes along with this. And balancing family, homeschooling and work. All right. So I have absolutely no problem sharing my stuff with people in relation to this. Um so I'm I'm extremely uh, I can't spell I'm brutal so there's probably loads of spelling mistakes up on this I did get my wife to check it, um but uh, so I hope it's okay, um I I can't do I can't do my 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 uh, five year olds junior uh, English phonics or any of that kind of stuff so uh, the stress of all that and then dealing with work and dealing with you know that, that kind of stuff but as I say both of us are are, are self employed at home so we we've got to sit down and have a conversation with that, um it's great when they're all in school. I, I, I much preferred it to the last lockdown because they were all in school and it, it was very, very calm and easy in relation to home life. So that's a conversation you just have, we have to have with people around the house. So this is a huge one. Right? We need to find a day to deal with these different things with stresses. Dedicate an office space, have an office space. If you can look enough to lock it, lock it off. If you don't, buy a box, put your laptop, put your office equipment in it and put it so far out of sight that you, you don't see it until and, and you have a dedicated time to start. Un have a conversation with not just your employer, but also your family, because they need to know the boundaries. So um, lunchtime, our house, eight, eight year old and five year old. Yeah, right. Don't be running around the outside because you're going to distract me. Um, so, you know, you go out the other side of the house. OK, I'm lucky where I am. There's about 25 acres of grass that can run around. So, you know, that's that's fine. Um, but we need to have those conversations. Like that, you know, there's no point in, you know, you bottling that up. That just has to be out. And But also take talk to your employer. Do I need to change my hours? Do I need to start at, you know, work from maybe seven to nine and, and take, for, you know, the middle of the morning off and, 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 and juggle things around, okay? Um, structure your day, right? Um, it's a huge part of my uh, life outside of work is, is, is going through these things with guys. So set, we had Kevin Doyle on actually last Tuesday with talking to us about the talking to our players and you know, just about setting targets, goals, all these different things. Um, but actually write down what you're going to do every day, right? Monday to Friday, uh, you know, even Saturday to Sunday, because lots of people in the breakout room I was talking to really, really, really struggling with not getting exercise in, right? Um, and, and there's loads and loads, and that's happening a lot. Like, because normally we, we walk maybe two miles from a car park or in the work. 
but there isn't an excuse really if we we because we have time right okay so we've got to just organize our days and, and come up with a different way of doing that uh, um, and set and set the targets out there say look i am going to walk so february i'm going to walk 100 kilometers you know what i mean um and you know set stuff that's realistic to you you know can i get uh five minutes of yoga can i get something else in the day so like you know, if i normally an hour for lunch have your maybe lunch you know uh, for half an hour and then try and get the other half an hour rather than watching telly or doing it go for a walk do something um you have to do it okay otherwise we'll all go a little bit crazy on this stuff so you know as i said make sure you bring your stuff away from that's a huge one bring your stuff away um, and then avoid you know i've taken all my emails off my off my phone I have a laptop here in front of me, or a computer here in front of me. So like that, 95, that's it. Get yourself out of WhatsApp groups you don't need to be in. You know, different things like, you know, those those small little things with screen time because I certainly found it in the first lockdown, um, the first couple of weeks that, you know, um, it was a uh, really, really big problem um, to be looking at the phone every so, so I took myself off uh, programs, gave myself a detox, did small little tiny things like that, okay? Um, like WhatsApp is my pet hate. I absolutely bleed and hate. It. Um, you know, there's this WhatsApp group. There's WhatsApp groups about WhatsApp groups, <laughs> and that's it's a it drives you know just leave you know they're, because they're just annoying. If and that's little small things like that. Um, you know, your employer, you need to start having a conversation, right? Okay, we need to, and we need to be more open uh, about these different things, checking on each other, right? So what we do, um, we're a small company, like so. My other, my other employee is, you know, 50 yards away here at the moment, so I, I, I don't need to talk to her anymore. Uh, so, <laughs> I, so, but what I do is I say, I, like, Dad lives on his own. He's, he's 60, he's 67 on Sunday, or 66 on Sunday. So we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, we have a three o'clock is set in in diary in stone that we, um, so straight after this, like, uh, we, we, we have a coffee and we, we're, in, there's only one rule. We're not allowed to talk about work, right? Um, that's it. Like 15 minutes, we're not allowed to talk about work. So we talked to Mandy about her her dog, maybe her dog, getting you know, who's going to the vet or with you know different things. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Talk about Man United winning nine 0 and you know that Liverpool are better than the Man United. Whatever it is, right? Um, you know, so Irish fitness families, whatever. You know, just for 15 minutes, do what we normally did in work. You know, uh, but come up with a different way of doing it. Um, social interaction, you know, a huge part. We need and we need to keep that going. Uh, you know, so that's not just for work. Like right? so, the same with your family and your group. Your your close your close group of, of friends you have. You need to start having that conversation and, and you know keep it going. You know, just because we can't meet doesn't mean we can't do it this way. It's just be a little bit different. Right? Um, and all this all helps. As you know, plan your daily exercise into it. You know, go outdoors. Um. You know, plan other stuff, you know, reading books, yoga, different things, something with mindfulness, uh, okay, um, whatever it is that will make you um, work, I say, uh, make it a little bit easier for you, uh, particularly um, breathing techniques. I hear it on, on, on the FM this morning they were talking about. So, you know, taking breaks away from work, um, using your annual leave, you know what I mean? These different things. So having these things, okay, and switching off. Um, classroom, right? I don't know how anyone else is getting on, but I'm certainly finding it difficult. <laughs> it's hard enough in my to make health and safety conversational um, in a classroom, let alone um, on Zoom. <laughs> so um, I don't know how everyone's doing, but like um, you've all heard, well, I, well, you probably did hear the college students um, who were very much in close contact, uh, who, you know, um, from I think it was Carlo OIT it was, um, you know, so... Things like that. We need to set out some rules, some cameras, some etiquette um, in relation to that. You know, little things like sound, um, muting, unmuting. How do you ask questions? All these different things. All the things I forgot to do today <laughs> before we start. You know what I mean? So we're having the conversation with students. Yeah, it's no. This is just because it's a virtual classroom. It's no different than a normal classroom. Have your have your ground rules and stick by them, and your etiquette around how you conversation have the how the conversation start, um, and how we work with things. Um, so at the moment, like for me, we're in the middle of trying to move across everything to DocuSign. So for me, the challenge for me is everything I do is legal documents. So we need to have, so if I'm doing manual handling on Zoom, I still need to get the signatures. Like a digital signature is not good enough. I still need to get their signature. So we're using, we're investigating DocuSign at the moment. Uh, we're using Google spreadsheets and MailChimp for feedback forms and all that kind of stuff. So we don't have any more paper. So it's driven it like it's something that as as the environmental section of the company, it's something we've been 
trying to drive for for a while now and this is all of a sudden pushed us straight into it and um, we're in the middle of updating everything and we're all our platforms and making things interactive so we have uh, our uh, website designer making little characters little cartoon characters of me and nikki and pat and you know so we, we have manual handling first aid all these different things will be done that way and yeah so we're yeah, we gotta learn and adapt um to it because it's going to be a lot of blended learning i think going forward so yeah um you know but the big thing is particularly on these platforms is is um the etiquette around it and the camera and the use of it um because you know we all make a little few mistakes here and there um so getting back right when we go back this, this before we go back to the to the classroom we need to remember right so we've now been out of out of work for you know maybe three four months so we still have to go back. We still, we, we we need to review our, our our response plan because we've got a changes in in guidance. Okay, and um, we need to have our self declarations done again. So we probably should do, and I have it there in question mark. Uh, you probably should do another COVID refresher and in, induction training with your staff on on Zoom or whatever it is. It is. Get the declaration forms filled in um, before they come back. Three days before they come back to to work. Um, you got to then look at do I need to clean the classrooms? Do I need to look at different things within the buildings that we're going back into? Is there staff actually working there? Um, is that still actually happening because it's not being supervised? Um, and then we need to be make sure we're we're obviously because we have things that are it's it's a little bit more infectious at the moment. Have we got the 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 procedures in place on suspected or confirmed cases? And we need to remind people on that. Lads, I was doing a course in in seven, the week of Christmas. And two people in the room. One was a, um, a, you know, didn't believe in COVID, so we had a conversation about that, and that was fine. But we had another person in the room who had, who had just collected someone from Dublin Airport, from Uruguay, and who was living in their house. Um, uh, so for the for Christmas period, right? So we've got to remind people of their of what the the things are and what the guidance are, and we've got they are and the key controls, like so it doesn't change social distance and mass cleaning and coffin etiquette, respiratory etiquette, um, they need to be, and then the key one, if we have the symptoms, we don't move. And that's it, you know? Um, so the isolation parts and all that. Kind of, so that's still very confused. So you need to spend time and going back to that um, on it. All right, so that's the end really. So what we say to everyone in relation to this is like, um, be really, really, really you know, careful, keep up to date and stuff. Um, but always with this, with COVID and anything else we do with safety, it's about behaviour, right? So we have to, behaviour, we won't do this because it's law. We have to do it because we want to, we have to because we want to try and change things. Uh, and the behavioural traits um, that come along with this, the reason I do what I do is that um, 50 yard, 150 yards away from my mum lives for me. So my mum is in, in her 60s with a heart condition. The dad is, in, as I said, is 66 on Sunday and is diabetes for 50 years. Um, and uh, I have a child who's di who's Down syndrome. Um, so they're the reasons why I do what I do, right? So, and you've got to have something like that, and that's how you get pushed the message home to people. Uh, it's about because this stuff will hurt those um people that are close to you, not anyone else really. Uh, the solution, really simple: wash your hands as often as you can for COVID, right? Um, and real quick, right? On what would what what we're we saying at the top tips from today from today is really plan your work, plan your week, right? Rate the importance of what you need to do, right? What's the most important thing to do? So, um, today the only thing that was vitally important to me was was this. So I have twelve other safety statements to refresh. One actually for one of your uh, your one of the the members of Antos here. Um, sorry now, but you aren't priority today <laughs> because you know. So and that's it. You know. So um, is it life or death that they get it back? They get their safety statement in two days time? Not really. You know what I mean? Uh, educating my kids this morning was more important, right? So that's and we so we've got to do it. So and that has to be the conversation. Plan coffee. Plan your chats. With not just with work but other people as well and then schedule yourself into work fitness diet plan out what you're going to eat plan out what you're going to do plan it you know so because uh, all the you know these things um exercise is key and then the diet then goes along with it. and then for for us discuss um family and agree family time so uh i think it's what half four today we've uh, we're we've you know cycling is today so we have a we have a deal you know so what goes on Nikki's on Zoom tonight doing first aid, so you know it's 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 there, and that's a huge part of it because there's um, 
we're living a lot more with <laughs> our partners and, and our family. So um, it's certainly a challenge, right? So we need to have those relationships when we come out of here uh, as well too. So um, hopefully. Um, so we've got to, to manage that um, and we have to have the conversation uh, with the people uh, and what we're doing. Um, I, you know, so uh, all this helps my OCD. <laughs> so um, and it's, it's all the way to just to, to relieve a little bits of stress. Um, that's in relation to the presentation. I go to the questions. Uh, I have a few questions for you. Yeah, you uh, will, can, I, will you I shout can. them out and make I sure indeed, to, yeah, I will indeed. Uh, in fairness to you, Shane, thanks very much for that. You really helped, especially talking about the different bits and how we can. Uh, improve our work-life balance because I know there was a good few questions about that. Um, sharing devices, any any tips on sharing devices with with, with school users? <laughs> um, Christ, um, that, no, not him. Just just the school <laughs> users. <laughs> Right. So um, again, like have your have your you're gonna have to timetable it out. Um, really, the other thing too with the sharing, talking about sharing devices, like so I'm sharing my screen there. Um, you need to be careful what your your search history of what's after coming up on, on Google and all those different things and um, your wonderful interest. But yeah, definitely that that's something that <laughs> happened to our Zoom last night in relation to. Uh, the coaches, one of them shared something they weren't supposed to, <laughs> to share. Yeah, it, it does happen. Uh, yeah, Enda, they... asked, Enda asked a question actually just on Bluetooth. Is there is there a reason why it's better? Just there's no wires. Like so, like see this here. That's like so. I'm I'm standing back here, so I'm letting that fall. It, it, it's a uh, it's um less things to clean, easier to move. And then if I have Bluetooth, so let's say I'm not like so I'm not working with you at the moment, so like or I'm not doing any computer work typing. I'm here now. I can I've just moved I've just moved that now away to the other side of the desk. So if I have a small desk, if I'm correcting let's say exams or stuff like that, I can move all these things around. Yeah. To be honest with you, have us have less things to clean. Um, <laughs> to be honest, is, well, that's uh, that's important for the for COVID in, in in your in your offices. Like so, if I so see so like that's all that all. If I'm in an office and I'm sharing this, that all has to be cleaned twice a day. If if so, less things to clean, the better. You know I mean? Yeah, uh, and I also mentioned um, what they call it is, is the advice that you've given regarding the basically I suppose everything is it legal or is it advisory? Is it like guidelines or is it legal? Uh, the COVID stuff is guidelines at the moment, you know. So we we do have to play, provide a safe place to work, but all the stuff in relation to ergonomics and working from the, at the desks and stuff, yeah, that's a legal requirement. We employers have a duty of care to provide a safe place to work. Okay, so if you're working and you're back and you don't have, you can't have the postures and at the right angles. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but uh, that there's a caveat to that though. Right, remember what we're dealing with at the moment. Okay, we need to have an open conversation, and if this is going to continue, and you're, you know, uh, and you're going to be remotely working all the time, you, we need to. The employers do need to invest. There is grants, as far as I'm aware, that, that for for that. I'm not I'm looking at 100 sure, but um, you can check that out. Stephen mentioned as well that the he was able to get an ergonomic assessment on the HSA. I think yeah. it was. That's the one. Yeah. I, that's yeah. That's the one. I was the, the link. That's the link I've sent saved to you. That's all. It's all there. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And Breed mentioned that uh, central procurement can make it difficult ordering locally. Uh, so oh. I, I I take it from I take it from that. Yes. What she's trying to what she's trying to find out is how do we get around that. Um, uh, <laughs> don't say anything, Shane. <laughs> uh, no, I've lost. I've lost all the. I've, I've war for Wexford. I do war for Wexford DTB schools. All the secondary schools were all my clients, but I've unfortunately lost them for, for that reason. So yeah, central procurement. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, yeah. That's. Uh, I don't know if there's a if there's a, if there's accounts you can use for miscellaneous stuff. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the, I, I do know there is different types of funding as well. I will say for for different community groups and stuff. So maybe yes, you know definitely. that that. Yeah. That is one of the ways yeah. of possibly doing it, and uh, so that that is an option. Um, and then the last thing I'm just going to say is uh, I'll actually open it up. Is there any other questions or any other points that anyone else would like to basically jump in now? And I'll sort of remove my spotlight. Um, so if there's anybody else would like to say anything, I'm just looking to say, Christ, this, this this is very quiet compared to the last one. This is great. <laughs> So the, last ones, the last ones were standing up and beating beating stuff and all the rest of it. Um, it's very I relaxed. Think, I, yeah, this is very relaxed. It's the way it should Steve, be. Stephen, you have a question. Do you? I think Stephen's shouting in, is he? Well, I was going to say now. <laughs> 
Um, oh yeah, it was just about the, the, I think there's a difficulty and there might be some work to be done. Um, if it, just that everybody is in a different situation. Mm. Um, like I'm very lucky here. I have, I live on my own. I have a fairly big house in Ross Common and it's great. It's perfect. But not everybody is in that situation. So you get people that have problems with kids being there. You get people that have problems where they're living in a small apartment. Um, some of our learners are literally living in one room and they're trying to do all this stuff on their phone. Um, everybody's situation is different. So everybody's problem having different problems. I don't know how obviously can't solve all of their problems no and there isn't there isn't a there isn't a one fit all um approach yeah. and like if i'm if i was doing the if i was coming into let's say look i just knew access and wexford the one of the guys i help out a little bit like so if i'm going into marion and and, and, and the, 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 like there's four different staff but they're all different and and so yeah it's very much it, it needs to be an open, you know, it needs to be a conversation, you know, really with individuals rather than than, than in groups. Like so, that's the, and, and and then you're not going to know. You're definitely not, like you're not going to be able to solve everything. And I, look, hopefully this won't continue. We'll be all roll on September. We're all vaccine vaccinated and we're back in the classroom and we're back to some way of normality. You know, that's that that's what we're you're you're we're hoping for. Um, and and the problem with this now is it it's becoming it's becoming um so long that we're, we're we're struggling with mentally i think more than anything else you know? yeah. yeah i think as well like we're just in the process of getting everything set up so that we're ready to go when we're given the all clear to get back into our center yeah but we're having to rewrite policies and procedures um rewrite handbooks hmm. and the chances are murphy's law says we get it done and then everything will open up and it'll be back to normal and all that work. <laughs> it'll be gone. The stress, the stress will be absolutely used. Yeah, absolutely. I've there's a question. Enda, can you explain your question as as a teacher teaching online? It's is the health uh, health and safety online of students the subject to the same requirements as it would be for an employer? So, who is that from? Enda Ferrer. Yeah. Do you, want me to speak? do you want me to speak? Yeah, or? yeah no, please, if you could, because I, I don't get what you're asking me. So, Yeah, okay. Um, teaching online, you know the information about the height of desks and yeah. everything that you've discussed. Yeah. Um, the onus, obviously, is on myself to make sure that the yeah. person that you're teaching understands the proper and the best way to do things. Yeah, um, so, yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, yeah, would there be some sort of a Oh God, let's say, for want of a better word, a disclaimer after the information is how would you go about presenting? So if if you're if you're presenting this to to your students, for example, is it yeah. like okay, right? So Absolutely. it's not illegal. So it basically it's different. So if I'm your employer and right. you're teaching online, we have an employer mm -hmm. and employee um, relationship. So but then okay. you're going you go and teach, let's say, this group here, for example, when we've thirty odd students on. Um, yeah. That you're you have no responsibility for their back or their okay. legs, what they're you know. So if they're lying upside down in the bed, um, once they're having a conversation and once they're engaging in the classroom, it's the same. Like it's like when they're sitting in front of you in in a classroom, you don't they don't have to be sitting straight for 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 you. you know what I mean, so but, the adv the adv advisory is sufficient. If I just let yeah, them know about their yeah, absolutely, brilliant. yeah, that's it. Thank so you. Like, I, and yeah. what you do is just what I would do at the bottom of the slide is this is taken from the like you would reference the HSA. So like what you're doing with any other documents in relation to just teaching. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, and that's you. actually, that's a brilliant question. I have to say, I really do appreciate it. Um, I, we've just run out of time, but I do know that Emma O'Kane wants to take a wee photograph of you all. And we all know how much we love our photos on social media right now, because otherwise I, I really would have no pastimes. Um, so uh, straighten yourselves up there, uh, Shane, especially. Um, you know, we're just after having a health and safety workshop. So, so Emma, uh, over to you. Yeah, if you still don't mind, like if anyone doesn't want to be thrown up on the Twitter page, feel free to turn off your camera. But on three, we'll smile. So one, two, three. 
Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I just want to say a big thank you to uh, to Shane uh, for, in fairness, uh, again, another wonderful uh, webinar. Lots of really interesting uh pieces there and I, I do actually appreciate how you've actually you've talked everything about ergonomics to mental health to uh, actually family life as well and I think it's really important especially in this lockdown lockdown 62 or whatever we're now calling it <laughs> but in this lockdown that we do look after our families our relationships our mental health and our work colleagues as well so it's really 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 important so Shane just I want to say a big massive thank you to yourself and a big massive thank you to all the all the members and everyone else that, that that's there today. If anyone has any issues or questions uh, for Shane, I will send out an email to everyone uh, this evening, just with the slides. And if there is anything else that you want to basically follow up with, feel free, you, you, you can. So that's us for today. So listen, thanks very much to everybody. Have a lovely evening. Take care. See you there, guys. Thanks, Philip.